A couple of weeks ago in early March, I left work a couple of hours early, um, three o'clock, in order to get to Guangzhou South Station. I was headed to Hong Kong for the Clock and Flap Music Festival. It was kind of an adventure journey for me. I hadn't been on the metro for real business. I needed to get somewhere on time. Probably my longest metro ride in Guangzhou. Penyu Square Station was amazing. It's a huge metro station serving millions daily. It looks a lot like an airport and it's really efficient and functional. I like the looks of the Metro Library. I didn't have a chance to pop in and take a look next time. Very impressive engineering and traffic flow. It's well organized for lots and lots of people. I'm pretty lucky because that entire ride from the north of Guangzhou to the south of Guangzhou took about 45 minutes to an hour, changing trains twice. That's phenomenal considering how many people use these trains. selfie everywhere I go. Ooh. Time to queue up. I have to scan my passport because everyone else has a Chinese national ID card. There was a lot of other foreigners being behind me in line, including one of my principals. They scan your passport and that's the identification you need to show that you purchased a ticket. And once you get through the ticketing, you have about 10 minutes to board the train. I paid a few dollars more to see what first class looked like. Since I was traveling alone, I didn't need to convince anyone else to spend a few dollars more, so I checked it out. I'm living that jet set, bullet train, first class lifestyle, ha ha ha. As far as I could I tell, to make a little first class video. There's not one pharmacy in this huge train station. Nobody sells lipstick, so there we go. I'm in first class, and my boss is in cattle car. I paid five dollars more to sit here. It's very comfortable. They're about to bring champagne. I'm just kidding. It smells like garbage, but it's nicer than her area. I sat here right before. Slightly more posh. Just wanted to brag. First class. The main difference between first class and coach is the interior has slightly different look to it, different fabric on the seats and different flooring. I didn't notice anything really different from the coach class on the train. There's outlets and all of the basic functions. 
in the other seats of the train. The fast train, of course, goes faster. It's really only an hour and a half on a regular train, but it's 45 minutes on the fast train. Fewer stops, I suppose. And a faster train, of course. I think this is, is going, um, this train goes as fast as the bullet trains in Europe and Japan. I was on a train in Japan recently and a train in Italy that went this fast. And voila, in Hong Kong. Going through customs was rather quick. And I'm walking to Mong Kok, which is a different neighborhood than I've stayed in before. Still a tourist neighborhood, like the other one I stayed in, but a little bit more authentic. More neighborhood, nightlife, regular people, not just people like me on vacation, as it was in the harbor front area. Took the opportunity to take a lot of pictures because I was alone. And it's a beautiful train station, just absolutely gorgeous. A nice view of Hong Kong. And the Opera House again, which I took a lot of video of the last time I was in Hong Kong. There were other people around me taking video of the outside, taking photos of that symbol for the train station. I'll admit, I walked around lost for quite a while just trying to get oriented. There's something with my GPS where it points me in the wrong direction several times. But then you really get to know a place. And I did see quite a lot. I saw so much interesting stuff. I'm glad I walked. Honestly, I don't know how to take a taxi in Hong Kong yet, but I haven't needed to. It's not extremely hot or extremely cold, and I enjoy walking. But when I got to my hotel, it really was quite busy. I believe with mainland Chinese, which is also why I'm there. We're all happy to be able to get out and visit Hong Kong. to take a video of my hotel room, but Hong Kong is notoriously small and this room was pretty large. It was quite comfortable. It's a lot more attractive than the other hotel I stayed at, so why not share a video? It's kind of cool and contemporary. There was tour buses full with people from Thailand. And these guys were walking through the lobby with gigantic beers, so I could tell that this was going to be a fun neighborhood. I was here for the concert, but I'm glad to have a comfortable room to stay in after a long, hot festival experience. I think that was fried baguette. I need to ask someone what I was looking at. The food is so different sometimes in Hong Kong. Really good food. So I'm excited for the festival, and I'm curious what it's going to be like. In such a you know strange environment in Hong Kong, they're going through so much. I'll make another video about my experience at the music festival. I could peek out the window and 24 hours a day someone was playing basketball or soccer on those fields. And because I have a school schedule, I wake up early, unfortunately. But it was a great visit. I enjoyed this solo trip to Hong Kong. Every time I learn a little bit more, and become more comfortable and familiar with the city. And I have to go back several more times to visit Disneyland and lots of famous places like hiking trails I've heard of where you can swim at the beach and go up to the mountains. Hong Kong has so much to offer. Stay tuned for the festival videos.